Hey everyone, welcome to Trucking Sustainably. I'm Jason Morgan. We're here at TMC where Volvo just announced the new Volvo VNR. We cracked the hood on it because they also made an engine announcement. The Volvo D13 VGT engine that's variable geometry turbo. We're gonna talk with Johan Agebron, Director of Product Marketing at Volvo Trucks North America, about the engine announcement and how it relates to the turbo compounding, what's powering the VNR, what's powering the VNL, how it all relates to sustainability. Let's check in with Johan. Johan, great to see you. We're at TMC, you've launched the new VNR, a lot going on here. Yes, it's a great time. It is. It's Under the hood, you have the Volvo D13 VGT engine, variable geometry turbo engine you just announced here. Yes. Okay, you're gonna have to give me a refresher on variable geometry turbos. It's been a minute, what, how does that, what is it and how does it work? It's really that you can, you can change the veins in the turbine so you can get it to heat up faster than, than a regular turbo compound that has a stationary turbine. So it's, it's two different applications. It really caters to different applications and also the, the products caters to different applications when we talk to trucks. Right. So it's really, you know, am I driving 500 miles, 600 miles a day or more or less? Uh, how many stops of deliveries do I have and where do I have to maneuver uh, a hub and spoke if it's really tight? That really tells you, you know, do I want the VNR, should I go for a VNR, should I go for a VNL, and should I go for a VGT or a TC? Because we're gonna offer both of these engines in both products. Okay, I see. So yeah, because that was a big headline that it's under the hood of the new VNR, it'll yeah. be in the VNL. So yeah, I, I wanna walk through that a little bit here. VGT, that's the, that's the announcement here. Turbo compounding, we talked a lot about last year. So you said mileage is one indication, right? If I'm maybe running at a more consistent speed over yes. longer miles, I'm looking at turbo compounding, right. VGT, I mean, we got the VNR here, you look at beverage distributors, you look at start-stop applications where they're making a number of deliveries. More that's regional distribution, right? That's why you can see it, it's, all, it's a little bit of an umbrella term for a lot of applications, right. but, but that's the VNR regional, right? That's the regional truck and, and the uh, VNL is the long haul truck. A little bit of that flavor, TC and stuff, but you have customers that bridge both. And that's why we give up both options. Yeah, very cool. Uh, all right, well, let's walk through a few more because there's more to this engine than just the VGT, right? What's yes, going on with the new more. D13? So what we did also, we've changed the injectors. Okay. Uh, they, that goes together with the piston. So this one, again, goes from a six-wave piston to a seven-wave piston. So it's really all the continuous improvements that we put into the TC engine that you saw in the VNL last year yep. that are now also in, in, in this VGT engine yeah. uh, that we uh, put here yeah. to give that fuel efficiency. All in all, it's about a 3% improvement on the engine and powertrain right. uh, as such. Right, right, very cool. Um, one of the other bullet points, though, is the 24-volt electrical architecture. I know we touched on that in the VNL. What does it mean to the VNR and the D13 VGT? What are the differences or benefits there? Well, really, the, when it comes to 24-volt architecture and benefits, it, it's a lot of the benefits comes in the service and technician space to some extent. So 24-volt makes smaller components, uh, especially with the regards to electrically driven or belt-driven components, alternators, other things. They become a little bit smaller, compact, lighter, easier to handle. From a customer perspective, really the trucks going forward is going to be a mixed bag of voltage systems. You have trailers on 12 volts, you have certain lights on 5 volts, you have all this stuff. So. You know, the, it doesn't really matter what, to some extent, what the architecture is. It's kind of the design and, and you know, how can we provide components and provide uh, coverage for the aftermarket if, if such needs arise. Right, for sure. You mentioned technicians, you bring up the service side. Let's talk durability of the D13 VGT. What are the standout benefits that are going to improve that durability on the VGT? Well, side? I mean, it's all the learnings what, that we had from the VNL again, uh, you know. Everything we do is continuous improvements in durability. So, yeah, I mean, these new engines, we, we should not expect uh, them to be worse than the old ones. They are always improving when it comes to durability and quality and, and uh, those features. So, uh, and like I said, a lot of the things, con rods, the, the updates on the piston and stuff, it's things that we bring over from, uh, from the TC engine as well. And it, then it comes down to how much time do we have to calibrate and certify everything. And that's why you see a little bit of a time difference between the two. Yeah, right. Well, and you got the connectivity now too, where yeah. you're updating over there, making that smoother and easier. Absolutely. So all good there. Uh, let's talk 
sustainability because this is trucking sustainable, sustainably. Yeah. D13 engine, diesel, what role does that play? Volvo's very focused on decarbonization, sustainability going down that road. What role does the diesel engine play in that? Well, I mean, we, uh, we've, we've said it all the way back to the 70s. Our CEO said, hey, we, we, we know we're a part of the problem and we're determined to be a part of the solution. And that's really what it comes down to. Okay, we are where we are today and we're gonna improve. End game is we wanna go zero emissions. Uh, infrastructure, environment, society, everything has to go with it. We, we can't just do it alone. So while that is happening, we can't give up on diesel. Diesel is still the most uh, readily available fuel. Uh, it works in the infrastructure. It works in the society that we have created. And uh, that's, that's why we're gonna keep improving it. Um, now, diesel fuel can be, or these engines, all of them can be run on renewable diesel, right? Yeah. Uh, so there you have certain technologies like any hydro-treated renewable fuel, you can run that straight away in this one, no problem. Biodiesel, other things comes in because it's the production of the fuel that gives some contaminants with it, especially right. when we talk after treatment system. So uh, there it will be a little bit different, but, um, but really that's the sustainable journey that we, we we can't give up we got to improve these as well right. it's the majority of what's out there right well and you know uh, one of the previous times we talked we saw the renewable diesel being filled at new river valley Absolutely. we did that is that going to happen with the VGT all vehicles engine? all vehicles we sent out from new river valley is uh, today 100 percent hvo 100. Very cool. we don't use any other fuel <laughs> very cool one last question for you availability yes when are when is the d13 vgt available d13 13 VGT actually became available as of January of this year okay. in, in the VNL, and then of course it's going to be available from the start in the VNR here when we start production. Perfect, Johan. Always great seeing you. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you, Jason. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next Trucking Sustainably.